Monitors are essential pieces to sim racing. After all, it's through them we have a window to the virtual world. In sim racing, there are many types of monitors, including many types of formats. Ultra wide has been more popular over the last couple of years for many applications, like productivity and office work, as it boasts a wider than normal package that allows windows to be stacked side by side. Gamers and sim racers also took notice of this, as the wider area brings a bigger field of view that is super useful, especially when racing. And what we have here today is the BenQ EX3415R that was sent by BenQ for review, so keep that in mind. The 3415 is said to be a sim racing monitor that packs a lot of features and costs 900 pounds. That's quite a lot of money, but what is not a quite a lot of money is subscribing to the channel. Sim racing monitor or not, this is a monitor first, so let's look at the, some of the more monitory things. Feature wise, this is a 34 inch IPS display, which is 144 Hz with a 1 millisecond refresh rate or a 2 millisecond refresh rate gray to ray. It packs AMD FreeSync, it has a coverage of 98% of the DCI-P3 gamut, HDR400, built in 2.1 speakers, the speakers have to watch the woofer S5 watts, all of this in a package that has a curvature of 1900R. If you want the rest of the specifications, the list is below. This video though will be in relation to my experience with it, so geared towards sim racing with a bit of productivity and if this screen is what it claims to be a sim racing monitor. For connectivity in the back you've got the regular options, a couple of HDMI 2.0 ports, a DisplayPort 1.4, which both of them are solutions for 1440p 144Hz gameplay, a USB port to connect to your computer in order to work as a powered hub, and a couple of USB 3.0 to connect peripherals. This monitor comes with the mount and behind it there is a VESA 100x100 100 100 pattern that you can use to mount it to monitor mounts or your sim rig. In the box you also get the handy dandy remote control. It helps to set up the menus and your monitor, it's small and it's an obtrusive, it's easier to use and I think this should be used more. It's not a bad looking monitor with a nice curve and a chin that would make Jay Lana look jealous. The chin is also where the speakers are hidden. It looks quite nice, both in a desk with that angular desk mount and in the sim rig. This is a good starting point to talk about usability of the monitor. I don't know why BenQ sells themselves down to say this is a sim racing monitor. Sure, ultra wides are amazing for sim racing, but this is more of an amazing productivity monitor that is able to moonlight pretty well as a sim racing monitor as well. As this is a panel that has a 98% coverage of the DCI-P3 color gamut, it could be a good place to do content editing, for example, as long as you don't need any color critical work, because ultra wides normally aren't the most consistent over the whole screen and this screen is also not one of the brightest out there. But it can be used in that aspect as long as you lower the lights in your room. Anyways, because of the same wide gamut, it's a great place to consume content as well. I'm colorblind, but how I see the monitor is as a quite vibrant panel with excellent color reproduction. The HDR400 is quite gimmicky though, as generally HDR400 as a standard is. 400 nits in HDR are generally not enough, I don't like the look of it, but it's there if you want to enjoy it. Another reason why I think this is a great productivity monitor is something on the menus. Picture in picture. Want to have two different sources in the same monitor while avoiding two monitors? This is a great way to share the screen between a work computer and not a so work computer or a PC and a console. Speaking of consoles, if you use this with a console, it will be letterbox with black bars on the side. The menu is where the remote is quite handy to go through all the profiles. There's plenty of screen profiles to choose from, including the ones related to sim racing. Not that I see anything that is particularly sim racingly about them. Maybe this is where the sim racing monitor come from, all of these profiles for sim racing, I don't know, I just don't see any use for them. As a gaming monitor, it is excellent. The refresh rate, the color reproduction, the input lag, all top notch. I've been playing Battlefield 4 lately there and it works wonders. Cyberpunk is also an amazing title that uses this screen quite well. Unfortunately, my 1080 Ti begs for mercy when running it at ultra-wide 1440p. On a more casual racing game like Forza Horizon 4, its colors are an absolute joy to watch. As it is a freezing capable monitor, screen tearing will be minimized, so there's another win here. 
Now for the sim racing part of this review. Like I've stated, there's nothing particularly geared towards sim racing in regards to this monitor. In reality, there isn't a monitor in the market that is particularly geared towards sim racing. This specific one though has a design choice that makes it awkward to install in a sim racing rig. In this case, the VESA 100x100 mounting holes do not sit flush with the surface of the monitor. This is important to some sim rigs, as not all of them come pre-installed with a 100x100's exclusive mount. Some of them have more than one mounting choice, which slightly complicates the install process. In my case, I needed a slightly inexpensive multi visa plate, which I could mount it at VESA 200 to the rig, and then use the spare 100 VESA to fit slider M4 bolts. It's cheap stuff, but investigate with the mounting solutions of your rig before you buy the monitor so you have everything when it arrives. Of course, this video is about the usability of it in sim racing as well. 21 by 9 aspect ratios are becoming more popular for sim racing as time goes by and prices go down. The extra side space allows for more visual awareness of what's going around and the less fiddly nature of using one screen instead of three makes it a quite decent choice for uh, some setups. Sim racing will take the same cues as regular gaming, low input lag, great refresh rate, but the immersion level is far superior. It's easier to get the apexes and be consistent, and it's easier to get a great run out of your races. The racing mode does exactly zero in improving experience, speaking of that. It gives a different color balance, probably improves response time better than the sRGB mode, but other than that, it does absolutely zero. I would recommend getting the screen as close as possible to you to get involved by the curvature of the screen and get the maximum amount of benefit for this aspect ratio. Otherwise, a somewhat different field of view that these monitors run can become a little bit strange as they are a little more compact on the vertical axis and have less area than the 16x9 counterparts. As sim racing goes, this screen has very little to complain about. There's a bit of an annoyance with this big chin you see with the speakers. It won't let me sit the monitor as low as I want it to, but this is something that is not universal. Other than that, the sim racing performance is pretty much stellar as long, of course, you do not rely on these speakers for high fidelity audio. All the sim racing titles nowadays have support for these aspect ratios, so I don't think you'll be having much issues running a monitor like this, as long as you have the graphical horsepower, of course. BenQ, in my opinion, brings a monitor that is a jack of all trades with very little to complain about besides the price, which won't be for everyone's wallet. At 900 pounds, it sits around the same size in spec monitors and also around others that have VA panels instead of APS but they are brighter. If you want a monitor that can do sim racing and so much more, the BenQ 3415R is quite an interesting choice. I can tell you one thing, this monitor does so well as a productivity monitor that I'm thinking maybe in the future I'm gonna use it as one. 